In this video, I'm going to be talking about stimming in autism spectrum disorders. What is it and what does it mean? Okay, so stimming is a behavior where a kid on the autism spectrum will typically do some sort of repetitive, non-purposeful movement. It could be flapping their hands, it could be twirling, it could be using some sort of electronic device over and over again. Basically what it is, it's a repetitive uh, behavior. Now there's been a lot of theories over the years about why do kids do that. Uh, some people say that the kid is self-soothing. Some people say that they're trying to get sensory input. I'm going to give you a different perspective. Uh, in my experience, I've been treating these kids for over 20 years, uh, stimming is a sign of a problem with a part of the brain called the basal ganglia. And I'll put a little image up here for you. So the basal ganglia is a deep structure in the brain and basically, I guess the best way I can explain it is it's like a, it's like a filter. It's a selector. So everything that your brain wants to do, I mean everything, has got to go through this basal ganglia, this gate. And the basal ganglia decides on a millisecond by millisecond basis whether green light or red light, right? Is that going to happen or is it not going to happen? And stimming, when you especially see that repetitive sort of behavior, that's telling you from a neurological perspective that this basal ganglia is not working correctly. All right. Now there's a lot of reasons why that could be happening and that's kind of the next part of the, <laughs> the thing I want to tell you. So stimming, in my experience, in my perspective, and this perspective of other, other people, stimming is a problem with the basal ganglia. It's a neurological problem. Okay. Um, and what would cause that? All right. So the basal ganglia is very, very sensitive to the following things. It's very sensitive to inflammation. It's very sensitive to uh, lack of oxygen is very sensitive to different types of toxins. So basically, if you're going to pick a part of your brain that's like the most, uh, you know, susceptible to different sorts of metabolic and chemical damage, the basal ganglia would be it. Um, it's very commonly uh, the source, it's very commonly part of an autoimmune problem. So there's a condition called PANDAS and ANDAS, and we don't have to talk about that very much, except to say that the basal ganglia is susceptible to autoimmune attack. Now, what do I mean by that? So an autoimmune condition is where your immune system makes these things called antibodies, kind of like a little post-it note, and they stick onto something. And the basal ganglia, this can happen there, and it can be caused by a strep infection. And what happens there is that um, when you have the strep infection, your immune system makes these antibodies to help clear the strep infection. The problem is, these antibodies for the strep infection can also stick on the basal ganglia and the immune system can go in and start to uh, chew it up and cause dysfunction. But the basal ganglia can also be affected by things called phospholipid antibodies and these are just different antibodies. And in my experience over the last 20 years, I would say 95 easily percent of the kids that have clear stimming behaviors have got some sort of immune system problem. So stimming, again, it's a problem with the basal ganglia in the brain. Now, tracking down where that's coming from, that's a whole other story. Now, you will hear some people say that stimming is not something you want to try to stop. For me, it's like a warning light. It's like a dash light that says, check oil, there's something wrong with the basal ganglia. And so you got to make sure you're working with someone that understands that this can happen uh, understands what the basal ganglia is and understands all the different things that can affect it, which again are inflammation, autoimmune problems, uh, certain like viral infections can do it. Uh, those are the big ones. Uh, it could also be a problem with a, rather than it being like a metabolic problem, it could also be a circuit problem because there are massive pathways that communicate with the basal ganglia. Uh, such as the cerebellum and the frontal lobes. And if those pathways are not working correctly, then the basal ganglia is not going to work correctly. So it gets kind of complicated, right? There's these metabolic factors I was talking about, like with the immune system and that kind of stuff. And then there's uh, problems with the circuits that are attached to the basal ganglia. So you've got to make sure that the doctor you're working with understands that there are different possibilities and how you're going to work through them. So my kind of problem with the whole label of stimming is that I think for a long time, people just didn't really know what to make of it. So they thought, uh, the kid is soothing himself, right? Or the kid is trying to get some sort of uh, sensory input. And maybe that's true, but bottom line is it's a problem with the basal ganglia. So I would suggest making sure you're working with someone that understands all the stuff we just talked about and understands how to uncover that. So there are things you can do from a neurological examination standpoint to find out, is it a circuit problem? 
right? Is there a problem with the frontal lobes? Is there a problem with the cerebellum? You just got to know what they are. Uh, there are things you can do to metabolically work up a kid that has this and find out, do they have an immune system problem? You can do antibody testing. You can do immunophenotyping. There's a lot of other things. Like sometimes these kids have these problems because they have issues with GABA. They have issues with uh, glutathione. They have issues with, you know, the different neurotransmitters in the, in the basal ganglia. So it's a little more complicated. And I don't just, you know, I would never just treat some kids stimming. It's, it's part of an overall problem. The stimming is just one thing that's telling you what's going on with this kid overall. It's just, it's really telling you that they have a problem with their basal ganglia. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I got a lot more videos to come on these different aspects of autism, but remember that if your kid is stimming, it's telling you there's a problem with the basal ganglia. The, the question and the trick is figuring out what's causing that.